93.7 WMMS. Two one six five seven eight one double zero seven to join us live, or eight hundred three four eight one double zero seven. Boy, am I looking forward already to Saturday night. Me, Corey Roddick, Pat Butler. We do a new metal show here on MMS. It is called Two Hours to Midnight. I'm already in the process of uh, putting the finishing touches on what we'll be playing for you uh, this Saturday night. We'll play some Metal Church, Frail, a uh, dynamite uh, Cleveland band that doesn't get nearly enough attention. Uh, we'll pull out some old Diamond Head. We'll play Caius, uh, local music from Brothers at Arms. So I hope you can join us. It's a lot of fun. We love doing it. And I don't think there's any danger of us being uh, preempted by uh, baseball Saturday. But 10 to midnight. The show is called Two Hours to Midnight. It's 120 minutes of nothing but metal. Anything you want to hear, uh, submit to htm at wmms.com. The Guardians lose last night. Oh, in Chicago to the White Sox, eight to three. That's a final, boy. Uh, They'll get another crack at him tonight and then tomorrow afternoon to finish the series. The Guardians tickets you can win from me this week are when the White Sox are in town. That'll be for the uh, final game of that series on the afternoon of May 24th. So do those around 3.50 today and tomorrow. But Guardians in Chicago to play the White Sox. And again, White Sox are my A team. It's my home team. They're not a great team. So I can't believe they beat the Guardians last night, but they did, 8-3, to three, and a win is a win. 8-10 tonight is uh, your first pitch. 7-40 is when the pregame will begin here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. And last couple of weeks for you to be able to use the word poof at CLE Clothing Company. If you want to get yourself some appropriate gear, if you're going to a ball game or you just want to be out there, And you don't want to be walking around with a shirt covered in expletives. Sure, there are people who think the word Cleveland is a naughty word, but it's not. It's uh, filled with local pride uh, and ease. You can get those at uh, whatever you want. Sealy Clothing Company has retro buzzard merch there and all that. Just use poof, and it's 20% off whatever you get. Saw a lot. Speaking of T-shirts, I noticed I went to Heinen's to get some lunch today, and I noticed more than a few people wearing their Blink-182 shirt, which tells me either they had such a great time last night that they slept in their shirts, maybe they crashed downtown, so maybe they had that much of a good time, and they're still wearing what they wore last night. I like that we've kind of gotten past that thing of not wearing the shirt of the band you're going to see. That used to be so verboten back in the day. That used to be such a rock and roll faux pas. You don't wear the shirt, but I don't know if it's a generational thing or what, but... I think that's just a rock thing, because as someone who goes to country concerts and pop music concerts, everyone's wearing the shirt of the band. Oh, I think think it's also a generational thing, I think it's a little from column A and a little from B. I think it's absolutely a too cool for the room rock thing. Because, like, what what I see... But we never did it. We never did it. You'd go through... If you were going to see band A you would be rifling through your T-shirts of bands B through Z. Right, because you wanted to wear something that somebody would see and be like, oh, you wanted, well, you know you wanted to wear a cool shirt. Yeah, see, especially, like- especially if you were in, like, a under more underground scene. If you're going to see the people that are on the charts, that's one thing. But, like, going to punk shows when I was in high school and just out of high school, it was about wearing a band shirt that – had a following, but people didn't really know about. So if I wore a, something like Homegrown to a Blink concert and people were like, oh, Homegrown, that'd be cool. Like if you know, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, well, also I think there's a there's an irony to what's up. You know, you'll see people at a death metal show wearing a Backstreet Boys T-shirt. Well, that, you know. that's what I was going to say about pop shows is that like at the Backstreet Boys concert I went to last summer, it was a lot of, you know, women in their 30s and 40s wearing the 2000 Millennium Tour shirt. Mm-hmm. So it's like, Almost a flex in that way, like, hey, I've been coming to these shows for 20 years. Like, check out my... What a flex. It is a flex. You kidding me? Look at how vintage I am. (laughs) Vintage. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be old, but they want to wear the old t-shirts. Obvi. Everybody loves that. It's my oldest daughter's 24th birthday today. Wow. Happy birthday, Scoo. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, right? 24. She's like, I feel old. I'm like, you're not old. Shut up. You're annoying, but you're not old. 
Oh, you're older than you were yesterday. Yeah. Still younger than that dog. Still younger than that Portuguese dog. 31. Um, Mary didn't go to the Blink-182 show last night. She went to a flute concert. A woodwind concert. Yeah. And um, it was... Just as good as Blink? It was better. Was it packed? It was packed. Yeah. It was... School concerts always are. Three songs. (laughs) Three songs? Three How songs. long was the concert? Like, dude, less than a half hour. Oh, it, we it, just thank goodness. God, <laughs> thank it goodness. It took longer for the kids to file into their chairs and get ready than it did for this concert. Was this to go. the year end concert? It's their spring concert. Yeah, my daughter just had hers, and the thing was like an hour, 15 minutes long. Well, they got like seven first grades at her school. So my sister got last minute tickets to go see Blink last night. So she asked me, she was like, hey, can you watch the girls after the concert? I said, sure, no problem. So I told Brian, I was like, I think it starts at 6.30, so it'll probably go till like 8 would be my guess. I was like, I don't see it being longer than that. I called him at 7, and I was like, hey, we're on the way home. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened, wow. but this one is literally three songs. Got some time to kill now. As soon as they started, I started cracking up. I was like, oh, my God. You know, because they're, they're children. They're trying. My sister has this, like, welled up eyes full of pride. And she's like, this is, she, and she, she, like, elbowed me, and she goes, dude, I know this is bad, but this is better than the last one was. And I was like, oh, my God. Wow. Like, there's no way. And what does your kid play? She plays the flute. The flute, yeah, okay. Yeah. But but so it's flute, it's clarinet. There's a flute, kid play. Clarinet, is there a kid playing a saxophone yet? Saxophone, trombones. Yep. Um, Oboist. So, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it was. Um, you sent me some of it. I did. <laughs> People want to hear what Mary was subjected to? Oh, yeah. I started. I started recording, and my sister just shakes her head. She's like, "Dude, I hate you so much." Please tell your sister. Think of the show. I know, right? right? Yeah, she doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Keeping time okay. It's just yeah. it's not bad. But it's, like at that grade level, it's just yeah. a cacophony too. So yeah. right. <laughs> the egg shakers. <laughs> it would have been great if you'd been able to combine the two. If you would have been oh, able to with that. Yes. Yeah, dude. Fell in love with a girl at the rock show. She said why. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, but they played. You get like- the woodwinds and uh, Travis Barker. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> they played the first song and it was like a minute and a half, and then they had. But kids. I also like. I also like when the teacher or whomever is hosting the thing. Will tell you what the song is, oh, as yeah. if you'll ever be able to pick out that arrangement. Well, they they had students come down and do it. So before each song, which again there was only three, they had like six or seven students come down and read like a sentence each mm-hmm. about our next piece is right. Da, 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 you is know? Brahms <laughs> okay? The one that diving that one. deep into the German composers. That one that I sent you, they were like, this is going to show our range in, I don't know anything about music, something about B, the letter B. I don't know if that is. The B sharps? The B sharps. It was going to be the range of the Bs or something like that. And um, Flight of the Bumblebees? Not that. I know that one. Um, But it was funny because after the kids got back to their seat, the one kid was like messing with the other kid. And the teacher sit like the conductor standing up there, and she's like, "Hey, hey!" She's like having to like reprimand the children. They're you know they're eleven years old. Like that's not they're gonna act up. You know? Right? Yeah. The B sharps. Hey, stripper Scott. Oh, uh, hey guys, how are you? I was just thinking of stripper Scott today because I was reading about the first. A uh, strip club to unionize out there in, uh, well, first in a long time. The, the, a strip club in Los Angeles has just unionized. And I couldn't help but think uh, of Stripper Scott. Oh, thanks. That's good. <laughs> good unions are good, I'm told. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up? Um, hey, real quick before I story, uh, I don't know if this affects you or the way it's set up. Uh, you were talking about uh, playing uh, music clips, but it was uh, did not come over to the on hold uh, line, so it was just silence when you guys were talking about whatever was getting played. Don't know if that's supposed to happen, or I just figured I'd let you know. 
Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a dumb story about wearing a concert shirt. So um, I uh, would wear the shirt of the band I was going to see. I went to see Metallica. This is like 20 years ago. Whenever Seven Dust was, they'd been out for a couple of years, and Kid Rock was brand new. So he was the first act. It was it was Metallica, Seven Dust, Kid Rock. So I wanted to buy shirts from all of them. But then I'm not. I can't just like hold the shirts. So I I put them all on. <laughs> one on top of the other, on top of the shirt I was wearing. So I had four of these heavy-ass cotton black T-shirts on inside the Gund Arena, sweating my ass off for like three or four hours. Uh, apparently that's not the way to do it. Or I should just hold them in a bag or something. I don't know. Uh-huh. All right. You had four T-shirts right, well, on. It wasn't a great story. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was, and yet it, he it couldn't foresee that. Yeah, it's okay. He couldn't yeah. foresee that. All right. Thank you, Scott. There's stripper Scott with a um, unintelligible story about band T-shirts. Your daddy issues. Give him a bonus, stripper Scott, Scott, Scott. Hey, Rich. Hey. What's, What's going up? on, Rich? Hate the show. Thank you, Hate sir. Hate the show. Thank you. And... I think I was at that concert that Stripper Scott was talking about, and I believe Seven Dust was the opener. Then it was Kid Rock. Okay. Then Metallica. Okay. It, it could be. I yep. don't know. But uh, you guys are talking about concert T-shirts and expletives on T-shirts, and I have the trifecta. I bought a T-shirt from Inducing Panic, which is a local punk band mm-hmm. in Cleveland. Uh-huh. And it says "f your face" on it. Mm-hmm. That sounds more like an inducing and... labor T-shirt. <laughs> I wear that to all my family gatherings. It's fun. You wear that to family. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> what? Why? What are you trying to prove? Like, what's the point? Um, I just I don't care. Do you not I like your I family? Know. I mean, you do care. That's no. why you're wearing it. If you didn't care, you put on like some dumb polo and go talk to your cousin. Like, what's That's the point? True. I just like to feel comfortable in clothes, and that. I don't feel comfortable in clothes, to, but you specifically a bit of a pick an F. You, right, but it's like then you know I don't know. It's just I don't know. Listen, you do you. I just say you know you're hanging even if you don't like your family, which if you didn't, you wouldn't go to the event. F your well, face these T-shirt. Gatherings, these are older kids, and they're my cousins. It's not like my grandparents. I said I like to feel comfortable in my oh, clothes. It was I a see. nice fitting T shirt. So these so you're trying to be the cool guy. You you have older cousins, you're trying to be like a cool guy. Well, I'm forty five years old and I'm still try to feel like I'm sixteen, yes. Right. Trying to be cool. Right. Okay. I mean mentally we're all sixteen. I totally get that. But uh okay, right. listen. Thank you, Rich, and uh, condolences to your family. There's Rich out there in Wellington who wears an F your face T shirt at family gatherings. Oh, everybody goes, oh, here comes Uncle Rich. Mm. <laughs> no, nope, that's just and who he is. He likes to be comfortable in his clothes. Um, There's a kid that I went to high school and middle school, and I think he went to my elementary school, but he was a like one of those kids that was good from the moment he touched a cello, just like a savant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the time he was in high school, he was playing cello with Yo-Yo Ma. And I can't remember his last name, but his name, I believe his name was Brad. His last name's Ma. Well, that that's I didn't go to school with Yo-Yo Ma. I went to oh. school with a, I believe his name was Brad, but he was an incredible cellist, and it was, so we'd have those concerts where everybody would play, but then they'd like go, and now for the good kid. Right, <laughs> and yeah. Then he, and then he'd play something perfectly. Yeah. He played with the Cleveland Orchestra from time to time. Like, he had an incredible career as a cellist before he was even out of high school. And I don't think he kept with it. I think he got tired of it. He's like, yeah, I'm done with that. Boy, that's how you know that you are super talented or that you're smart enough to be talented across a variety of um, just different kinds of things, right? Because you're that uh, preternaturally good at an instrument and you go, nah, I- I'm tired of doing that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Where most people are good at one thing, and they hang on to that thing like grim death. Oh, we he, had, goes, he was like, meh. We had a few people like that. Our, good for them. The, the high school, the, the the only year the bees, the Medina bees were very good was when I was a junior, and 
the quarterback was a senior and he was top of the class. I think he was like he was salutatorian or something like that. He might have been valedictorian. Uh, but he also played in a band and he was also like the nicest guy. And then after he graduated, he got a job as an engineer and then quit that and became a doctor. Yeah. He's like, I just, <laughs> he's like, yeah, engineering wasn't doing it for me anymore. So now I'm a doctor. And yeah. I was like, dude. Yep. That's insane. I had a friend who went to med school and he's, became a practicing, practicing doctor. And he was like, I'm not fulfilled by this. Went to law school, got a law degree. Yeah, like real life Frank Abagnale, where they're like, actually yeah, like, doing the work, not just pretending to be it. Yeah. Except I think they're saying now that that dude's story is all made up, too. Frank, Frank Abagnale? Abagnale, yeah. The catch me if you can oh, guy. Oh. I know. I don't, I don't want to kill. I'm not trying to kill the dream. I don't want to kill the dream. But, uh, yeah. I mean, he so. committed the fraud. That's what. Correct. Yeah. The, he was really good at that. The fraud is the part. That good at the fraud. Yeah. If you listen to it. Pass the bar exam. Yeah. That's real. I'll tell you what, I don't pass a bar. Hey, oh, <laughs> if I. Uh, cause, hey, the iHeartRadio app, a uh, little red button there. You um, you guys, that uh, you can find the button. And you can leave messages there for us. You guys were talking the other day about feeling like a fish out of water in fancy department stores. Uh, I took a date just as a, a last minute decision to a, a fancy steakhouse, not realizing, you know, what the prices were. And uh, the guy looks at us, clearly underdressed, and says, uh, you, would you like to see a menu first? Um, I took one look at the menu, you know, a little pissed off, and, and realized quickly, you know, Applebee's is still open. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the move that they'll do. Would you like to take a look at the me- rather than saying, hey, you guys clearly can't afford anything in here. Mm-hmm. Would you like to take a look at the menu? And invariably, the menu won't have the prices on it. Well, and here's the thing, though. So the start, I was telling about how I was in New York City at Saks Fifth Avenue, and I was looking at, you know, $2,000 pair of high heels. But the thing about New York is that I feel like there's so much money in that city, and it's from people doing all kinds of different stuff. So just because I'm not wearing Balenciaga shoes walking in there doesn't mean I'm not day trading on Wall Street. Right. You know what I mean? Like, for a city like New York, where... I don't know. I felt like you never know there. Whereas LA is a lot flashier. No, but know? like the people the whole like thing, to wear their money though. They you know. But they, but they, there they is like a whole have. thing too now where you get to a point where you're making so much money that then you dress basically like a homeless person. But that's what I yeah, mean. Yeah. So like I think I think Mary's money. onto something. There's like people that yeah they just go I can so I can dress however I want. Or I mean Adam Sandler's got more money than. Basically, anybody. He wears basketball and shorts. He just wears basketball everywhere, shorts. everywhere he goes. goes. Like he's, <laughs> Doesn't he's, matter he's, where he's he is. He's, he's, he's got though. two speeds: sweatpants and basketball shorts. So yeah. that's it. Like, right. He, and he's the. Well, it's because he's yeah. a chubby dad too. He's like doesn't matter how much money. It he's doesn't got. matter I mean, what era it was though. He's always worn basketball shorts. Has he? Yeah. He was never. He he talks about well. There's a video of him performing at. Uh, evening at the Improv, like one of the few clips of him doing stand up from before he was on SNL. Sweatpants on stage. Yeah. yeah. And that was him trying to get to the next level, but he still just wore sweatpants on stage. He's consistent. Yeah. No, doesn't make it great. any less, more or less funny, depending on what you're wearing. I, I just it. thought in an era like 2023 where there are people who have, not saying I have an OnlyFans, but like where there are literal millionaires walking around from online stuff. Yes. People making crazy money off TikTok. Like, how, I don't know. Felt a little judgy to me. For no one does come up to me in my camo shirt and say, ma'am, would you like to try on this pair of Jimmy Choo's? But whatever. I choose not to, ma'am. Choo, Please choo, choo. go somewhere else. Not to buy these Cuckoo, shoes. Cuckoo, cachoo. But that guy, he's like, oh, we went to a steakhouse and it was too expensive. And so we, I figured Applebee's still open. But that's a tough situation, too, because you're jumping from one super fancy place to another super fancy place. <laughs> and I don't know how you get around that because... Oh, it's so lame. It's so good. It's like your dad doing you a like TikTok dance. I like Terrible. all of that song. Ugh. All those songs. Whip well, crime. I liked, I liked Walker Hayes before that song. Whatever. 
Dude, that song's just so gross. Stomach churning. So cynical. <laughs> okay, whatever. You're right. Everything's wrong with the world. And no, 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 no not just that songs. guy. Just, just that, that guy. That and, and his follow-up. <laughs> that one song is bad. Yeah, and his follow-up, Quaker Steak and Lube, isn't any better either. <laughs> Quaker Steak. <laughs> yeah. <and> Cheesecake <laughs> Factory. <laughs> yeah. Well, his uh, he has a song called You Broke Up With Me, which is like a revenge song. Like, you don't get to come back to me after I'm doing good now. And that was in like 2017 that that came out when I was going through a breakup. And that's when I found Walker Hayes. And so I was you like, really need songs to explain all your emotions for you. They don't. No, I know what my emotions are, but when I hear other people, uh, like, it's a relatability thing. That's all. When yeah. I'm like, oh, I like the song Kesha Praying, I have screamed <laughs> that song at the top of my lungs. Oh my That's as so like the a, song is called re- Kesha Praying? No, the song is called Praying by Kesha. Uh, it's a ballad about, like... Hey, he dollar sign, ha. Huh? Yeah, it's a ballad about, like, you wish you could. You left me, and you're an idiot. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just... I, that's not how I listen to music, and that's something that I'm trying to, like... Explain to my girlfriend, I'm like, these songs like mean so much to you, and that's how you relate to music. I don't listen to music and go, that's how I feel too. It's not, it's not that, and that's fine for you. It, it, but so it's just really. But I'm saying I've been with Walker Hayes before Applebee's. Okay. That's oh, she's OG with yeah. yeah. She, she she got the old Walker <laughs> Hayes tour shirt. Yeah. I saw him when she he was, was playing was, on a baseball she, 